Good afternoon, beautiful people. Are you all ready to continue the fight against FUD? My name is uh, Lucas Nuzzi. I am a Bitcoin researcher. Um, I had R&D at Coinmetrics. And today I will be talking about innovations in Bitcoin's technology stack. And my primary goal of this presentation is to shatter the notion that there's no innovation happening in Bitcoin, which is an unfortunate misconception that gets tossed around every once in a while. So when you talk about innovation in Bitcoin, you have to account for the fact that Bitcoin is a layered system. So at its core, you have this base layer, which is where the core properties of Bitcoin are implemented and where um, very low-level primitives are added to Bitcoin. These low-level primitives empower developers to build protocols around Bitcoin. And around this base layer, you have a protocol layer, uh, which is where um, those low-level primitives thrive. A good example of this is segregated witness, SegWit. Uh, as with any other base layer innovation, it was implemented via Bitcoin improvement proposal. It's how base layer innovation is standardized in Bitcoin. And SegWit was really important because it enabled the development of the Lightning Network. So with this aggregation in mind, we can then zoom in and look into the base layer a little bit more closely. So there's been a really interesting work around standardizing how new proposals get added to Bitcoin. And this is important because Bitcoin prioritizes security, censorship resistance, um, it prioritizes uh, stability, uptime, and it has the best uptime of any distributed system in human history for that reason. Uh, and here you have the taxonomy that Bitcoin Core has created to contextualize base layer innovation. Um, on the left side of the slide, you have BIP types. So as you can see, there's a big focus on new applications. Out of all BIPs that have been proposed over the years, there's been a huge focus in increasing the set of applications uh, that is uh, embedded in Bitcoin. Things like new address types, new transaction types. And what I love about this is that it enables you to reason about the development process and the innovation process at the base layer. Um, as you can see, a lot of BIPs get rejected or withdrawn. Uh, and this is an attestation to the Bitcoin development process. It requires a lot of patience. Uh, it requires um, a lot of diligence. There is review that takes place that takes, at times, years. Uh, but this has been the way that base layer innovation has um, occurred in Bitcoin and has been contextualized in Bitcoin. When we think about the protocol layer, the protocols that are using these BIPs to innovate, there hasn't really been the same level of standardization because it is up to you to actually just build an application around, around that. So in 2019, I created a taxonomy to help contextualize how this type of innovation is happening in Bitcoin. And I created six categories to help us contextualize uh, the protocols that are being built on Bitcoin. So side chains, uh, privacy protocols, performance and usability protocols, mining protocols, things related to smart contracts, implementing smart contracts in Bitcoin, as well as layer two solutions like Lightning. And um, when I started applying this taxonomy to the ecosystem of protocols in Bitcoin, uh, back in 2019, I was tracking about 30 protocols, um, which was impressive at the time. But this year, I went through the effort of doing that again. And what I found was incredibly interesting. There has been an explosion in protocols that have been built on Bitcoin, uh, especially over the past year or so, uh, after the activation of, of Taproot. Um, if you start looking into the layer two section here of this diagram, um, half a dozen of these protocols have been released in the past year alone. There's been a ton of interest from recent grads to build routing uh, solutions for lighting, routing protocols, rebalancing protocols, better analyze the privacy guarantees of Bitcoin and Lightning specifically. There's been a lot on state chains that I'm particularly excited about. Um, the Mercury, Mercury protocol um, as being the first state chain implementation has gotten a lot of traction and, and interest in the community. On the sidechain front, 
uh, liquid and elements continue to push the envelope when it comes to testing new features um, on Bitcoin. There's been quite a bit now on asset securitization using liquid, the first sovereign debt that will ever be issued on a blockchain, uh, or that has been issued on a block, or will be issued on a blockchain rather, uh, is happening on liquid, which is a Bitcoin sidechain. It will be the Volcano bond, uh, El Salvador's Bitcoin bond. Super excited about that. There's been this arms race on the privacy front to develop better privacy technologies for Bitcoin. I'm particularly excited about joint markets. Um, there's been this um, uh, fight between Samurai and Wasabi when it comes to understanding the privacy trade-offs uh, with their variant solutions. On the performance and usability front, uh, also a lot happening. Uh, there's a lot on the uh, custody front that I am particularly excited about. There's a protocol called Revault uh, that I have been tracking actively. It's a way to implement clawbacks in Bitcoin and add a second layer of security on top of your uh, Bitcoin private key. Uh, it uses mini scripts, which is another type of technology that uh, uh, the first out of three PRs for Bitcoin core has been merged, uh, I think it was yesterday or two days ago. Quite a bit happening on the mining front as well with Stratum V2, probably one of the most important protocols to uh, ensure the decentralization of mining. Brains has been doing amazing work on that. And then on the smart contract front, there's also been a bit of um, uh, a race uh, really to understand how smart contracts can be implemented on Bitcoin. Um, with the advent of Taproot, there's been new protocols that are mixing layer twos and you know, smart contract technologies. Tarot came out earlier this week. Uh, it will be a really interesting way to track how these uh, protocols have been increasing the economic density of Bitcoin transactions. Uh, you might see one transaction on chain and not really know what that transaction represents, but it might represent um, transfers between hundreds of different users. So I'm really interested about that. Obviously, maintaining this is really challenging. And I was surprised at the number of new protocols that had come out and the differences between the 2019 iteration relative to this. So I'm really excited to announce that I will be decentralizing this uh, and uh, really maintaining this as an open source, community-driven project uh, with ecosys.org. It is a community-driven um, repository of all of these protocols that are innovating on Bitcoin. So if you want to read about any of the protocols that were in the previous uh, graph, you can go on ecosys.org and you can see, read them, and get relevant links around them. Uh, it is really important for us to better contextualize these uh, innovations because Bitcoin development, from in my perspective, is a very humbling uh, process. People don't talk as frequently about the innovations that are taking place, the things that they're working on. There's this very humble nature of Bitcoin development. And um, although that's great, and I love that about the community, better visibility around it is necessary. So um, I plan on continuously maintaining this um, repository with newer protocols uh, that are coming out on a weekly basis. So. Make sure to go on ecosys.com to check it out. So I want to be mindful of time. It, I wanted to uh, get three points across for this presentation. First one is that you have to take into account that innovation in Bitcoin is layered. There are multiple layers to protocols that are being developed on top of Bitcoin. That's the beauty of it. That's what guarantees its security. Uh, it's a lie that there is no innovation happening in Bitcoin, as you guys just saw. Base layer innovation is powerful because it enables the creations of protocols that people can opt into. It's not forced upon you to use any of those protocols, but you can use them because they're based on these very solid primitives. And then three, the separation of a solid base layer and an innovative protocol layer is very unique in uh, in this industry. Uh, no other protocol has the separation, and hence we, why you see so many security exploits 
Uh, so there are very um, um, underappreciated characteristics about developing things like smart contracts on uh, Bitcoin. You're doing so in a way that does not uh, sacrifice its core properties. So this is what I have for you guys today. Um, make sure to go on ecosys.org to read about everything that's happening on Bitcoin. Uh, there will be a public GitHub repository where people can contribute uh, the things that they're working on. And hopefully, together as a community, we can eradicate this misconception that there is no innovation happening in Bitcoin. Thank you for your time.